Hey guys, what's going on? It is Lockie here from Coast Sports Football, and how good is it to have football back? And uh, finally, we can talk about it, right? I feel like we've done, you know, hundreds of preseason podcast episodes, and thanks if you have been sticking around for all that preseason uh, build up. Of course, it's always fun doing stuff like the ladder predictions, uh, predicting lineups, all that sort of thing. So, but now we can talk about the actual real thing, the football, which is here. And uh, you know, round one was was interesting. I of course did my round one review video. If you watching on youtube i'll make sure to link it up top if you if you want to go check that one out or i'll have it down in the in the, in, uh, the description but yeah man probably more questions than answers coming out of round one to be honest none of the games you know there were three teams that won but none of the games were won by more than one goal so um you know as one of the things that i highlighted heading into this season is that i believe that this has the potential to, to be the closest a league system a league season in history and so far i know it's just round one but it is living up to that but yeah coming up in this episode i'm going to be going through my team of the week very excited to each week in the podcast to be doing a team of the week running through my lineup of the best players in the a league from the past week and We've also got some listener questions coming in, which I had a bunch coming in, of course, because it is round one. Uh, a lot of questions coming in from the fans of uh, all teams across the A-League. And, of course, I'll be chatting to Max Ballard later in this episode as well. Max Ballard, a youngster coming up through the ranks at the Mariners. So that'll be at the end of the episode. And, again, if you want to jump to any of these specific things in the episode, guys, I'll make sure to leave the timestamps down in the description. But, once again, thanks for joining me here for another podcast episode. Um, so, first of all, I mean, just touch on round one briefly I mean some of the main takeaways that I did want to touch on uh, before jumping into my team of the week is that um, well first of all you could probably look at the three victories the three, the three wins one of them being Melbourne victory uh, my Central Coast Mariners of course picking up the win in the F3 derby and uh, of course the reigning champions Melbourne City now none of those wins were convincing wins uh, some of the things that I took out of it though there's like Melbourne City are looking as strong as ever um, you know the way they controlled especially that first half against Brisbane it was interesting to see, though, that Matt Leckie, in Matt Leckie, Jamie McLaren, I mean, that front three weren't quite clicking. I mean, there's a lot of hype leading to the season. To be fair, though, they are coming right off the back of Socceroos duty, so uh, no reason to be critical or harsh there. I'm sure they will get clicking as the season progresses. Um, a couple other things as well. I think the two sides and two bottom sides from last year in Melbourne victory and Newcastle Jets both looked really, really good. Obviously, the Jets losing out to my Mariners, but um, Melbourne victory as well. I mean, they, they, both sides, you know, they've, they've got the personnel to really, you know, um, do some damage in the league this season, in my opinion. Victory especially looked really defensively solid. You know, we even saw Roderick Miranda chip in with the goal there, the winning goal um, against Western United on Saturday night. So, um, yeah, interested to hear as well what your sort of takeaway is from round one. There's, uh, there's There was a lot of talking points heading into it. Um, you know, I guess the Sydney derby was the one that sort of, I guess, slightly disappointed fans. Uh, I mean, we never, you know, never want to see a nil or draw. It was still an entertaining match and there were chances for both sides. Um, but again, it's the, just the de defensive displays for both of those teams were really, really solid. So defences were certainly um, in the spotlight for this weekend in the A-League. But... Let's jump into my team of the week for this uh, for this round. And these are the players that I think really, really stood out from this week. So you might have some completely different choices to me. We'd love to hear what you guys think of some of these players um, and maybe your team of the week as well if you want to drop that in the comments. So starting in goals, I mean, there weren't, there weren't any particular goalkeeping performances where like, wow, that was amazing, like he's a lock. But for me, I've gone for Wanderers keeper, uh, Thomas Mejias. I thought he made some really, really decent saves. Um, there was one off a Trent Bahagia header which was a great reflex save. Um, but some of the other keepers that performed really well, I mean, James Delianov made some decent saves for Adelaide United as well. Andrew Redmayne had to be called into action um, a couple of times in the Sydney derby as well. Um, so, you know, ke the keepers were getting involved here and there, but as I mentioned, no one that really like stood out. But yeah, Mejias for him, for me in goals. Across the back line, I've gone for five defenders because as I mentioned, it's been all about defenses in this opening week in the A-League. At right wing back, I've gone for Perth glory youngster, Anthony Burke. Burke Gilroy. He was fantastic. Uh, you know, he's he's a player that has sort of flown under the radar, you know, not one of these young players that really gets talked about often. And, you know, to be fair, he hasn't really, um, you know, he's still yet to establish himself in, in senior football. He spent time, you know, in the Jets Academy. He was briefly at Riz Brisbane Raw at the back end of last year. He's even had some stints over in the US. But, you know, he performs so, so well. I, w I was surprised to see him start. I, you know, I was expecting maybe Aaron Calver to start on that right-hand side for, for Perth Glory. 
but he, he was brilliant. He was linking up play. He was, um, especially in attack, he was just looking really, really dangerous. He had a shot outside the box um, that, that almost went in. And then, of course, he had the, the goal, that which, the disallowed goal in the second half, which was a fantastic strike as well. He was looking really, really dangerous throughout the whole game. And, and you know, I think a player who, who could potentially have a breakout season. But, yeah, Anthony Burke Gilroy at right wing back for me. Um, across the centre of defence, I've gone for Tommy Uskok. I thought he was really, really solid for his first A-League game for his new club, MacArthur FC. I uh, had a stunning goal line clearance uh, to deny Phoenix a second goal. Um, he's going to be a key pillar at, 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 in the centre of defence for, for MacArthur this season as well. You know, MacArthur, we talk about their attack, but in defence, that's where people maybe think they're looking a little bit shaky, especially after losing, you know, Mark Milligan. So uh, Tommy Oskok is in there for the team of the week. I've got Roderick Miranda. He was really, really sound in defense for Melbourne Victory in his first appearance down under, first A-League appearance down under. Um, and he chipped in with a goal. So all around a great performance from the man who, uh, you know, he was even wearing the captain's armband in this game. So, uh, you know, he looks like a solid uh, pickup there for Melbourne Victory this season. Finishing off the center backs, I've got Reese Williams. Reese Williams was fantastic in the Sydney Derby. Um, you know, I think it was on the Wanderers socials. They even put up, I, I, I think I saw it, they, they put up just, just a highlight reel of Reese Williams' moments from the Sydney Derby. He was shutting down opposition players. Uh, and he, not only that, but he, you could tell he was a commanding voice at the back for the Wanderers, you know, playing alongside Johnny Cotrumbus, who was a relatively young player. Um, and he was really, I think he's going to be a massive, again, a really key figure. All those three central defenders really going to be sort of important leading figures at the back for sure. Um, so Reese Williams is slotted in there in the center of defense. Left wing back, I'm going for the Central Coast Mariner. Jacob Farrell, uh, fantastic yet again. Um, but, you know, I spoke about it in my match uh, reaction uh, videos that I did for the Mariners game. And look, the thing that impressed me most about Jacob Farrell was just his his attitude and his, his willingness to get into challenges and to compete in this game. You know, this is his first ever A-League game. Even like throughout, he sort of came up into the scene late in preseason. His name wasn't really being thrown around to be, you know, competing into the first team. But, you know, he got, he got prom, sort of, you know, shifted into the, he was started training, training with the first team late in preseason. And all of a sudden was, was up for, up for, you know, selection for the FFA Cup game. Performed brilliantly in that game, was was really, really involved. And, you know, this was a much more stern test against against the Newcastle Jets side, an A-League level side. And, you know, he was he was up against Seattle Ravanis, uh, the Newcastle Jets winger. And, uh, you know, he, he looks like a really tough opponent. But Jacob Farrell, he was up for it. And he's a big dude too. Like he's tall. He's, uh, he, he's, he's kind of lanky, but he looks like he's got some strength on him too. Like the way he was sort of throwing his body into challenges. Great to see. And of course, that headed goal, that diving headed goal. Uh, brilliant stuff on his A-League debut. So Jacob Farrell has to go in there. Across midfield, I was really impressed with the return of Isai Ears for Adelaide United. I thought he was superb. He was conducting things for the Reds, especially in that first half. Adelaide were, for me, were really on top in that first half and could have had a number of goals, um, really sort of put Perth Claw under the pressure. Um, and Isai Ears was key for that, key, uh, you know, a key figure in that, in that Adelaide United control in that game. Uh, they didn't have control of the entire game, of course, but, uh, you know, he's such a key, he just, he's so calm on the ball. He's very smart, knows how to get around opposition players and knows how to pick a pass. And, you know, he hasn't dropped off in quality at all. So, so he is, looks like another fantastic signing. Great to see him back in the A-League. Um, across centre midfield as well, I've got Aiden O'Neill. I think a player who, um, you know, is probably an unsung hero at Melbourne City, but across that whole city midfield when you look at Metcalf and Berenguer they're working so hard but O'Neill is so key to that his ability he needs to be covering because because City's midfield is pushed so high O'Neill needs to be covering needs to be communicating with the fullbacks as well just the very unique way in which Melbourne City play that that defensive midfielder role is so important and Aiden O'Neill was um a similar thing to Islay is just the way City boxed Brisbane in in the, in the Friday night clash um Aiden O'Neill was key to that absolute key and I've also got Yugarkovich. And for me, it could have been, you know, either Stephen Yugarkovich or Terry Antonis from Western Sydney Wanderers. I thought they were both fantastic as well. In midfield, that midfield battle, I spoke about it in my predictions video that I did last week leading into round one, that in midfield for the Sydney derby, that was going to be key. And um, yeah, Antonis and Yugarkovich stepped up. 
looked fantastic. You know, we're getting physical and, you know, even a couple of times Yugarkovic springing forward in attack. It looks like they've got a really good balance there in the Wanderers midfield, even with Petratos up front, um, just behind Hemet as well. And of course, we saw Jack Rodwell come off the bench and uh, and Keanu Bacchus is out with injury, but when he comes back into the side, it's going to be a uh, headache for Carl Robinson to for who to choose in that cent- center uh, defensive midfield position. And then, you know... Uh, up top, there weren't any particular strikers. Again, there weren't any particular strikers who like had an amazing game. So I've picked two strikers who, who I thought performed you know reasonably well on the weekend, but did, certainly didn't have their most standout games. But again, there weren't necessarily any attacking players who really stood out. But I've put in Bruno Fornaroli. Um, you know, he's a constant threat, and that goal that he scored was just fantastic. That's the goal of the round for me. Um, just the swivel, the turn, defenders backing off, and he just picked his spot. And 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 with power too. Like he he gave James Delinoff no chance with the amount of power he put on the shot so it was accurate it was powerful it was a wonderful strike uh bruno fornaroli um you know he, he's getting on a little bit but but you know that he's not losing any quality at all so uh, that partnership hopefully that he's going to create with daniel sturridge hopefully for perth fans uh they're gonna they're gonna tear it up in their league this season and then lastly i've actually put marco arena in there and again another one of those unsung heroes maybe for the mariners where you know we saw josh nisbet as well grab the goal but for me arena was was fantastic yet again and we've seen it two weeks in a row last week in the FA Cup and this week against the Jets where Arenia, you know, he, he, he slid in that, that pass for, for Nisbet's goal and he did the exact same thing in the FA Cup. He, he's not only is he a focal point in attack for, for all the other sort of midfield players to sort of rotate around with around him, but he's a playmaker as well. The way he, he links up play and, and, and plays in the wide men, it was, it was really fascinating watching sort of uh, the chemistry between him and Josh Nisbet, a combination that we hadn't seen before. Usually he's playing alongside uh, Simo, of course, up top. But um, I really like Arena. He, he's so he's so dynamic in his play. He's not just a one-dimensional striker that we sometimes see in the A-League. He's, he was getting really, really involved. And, you know, we saw it throughout last season. If you think of that uh, Matt Simon goal again, away to Wanderers, again, that assist for, for, for that goal as well. So the guy can score. The guy can uh, set up goals. Uh, he's going to – if Mariners are going to finish top six this season – it's going to be on the back of some fantastic attacking play from Marco Arena, the Costa Rican. So that's my that's my team of the week for this season. It's 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 lining up in a five three two formation. So yeah, definitely defense heavy. That's where those performances came for me. Um, let's jump into some listener questions now, though. So guys, thanks so much for sending in these questions, whether you're shooting them through on the Instagram stories or on Twitter, Facebook as well. You can uh, search up Coastal Football on any of the platforms. Um, so. Let's jump into some of these right now. And uh, we'll start off with this. This one has come in from Brock on Instagram. Is Bruno Fornaroli the best number nine in the A-League? Ooh, I don't think so. I think the best number nine in the A-League is still Jamie McLaren. Um, and I'd probably put uh, I, I, Fornaroli's, I don't even know if I'd put him second, but he's definitely top five, <laughs> which I know maybe isn't saying much because it's the A-League, but I feel like maybe Lafondra's up there as well. Again, Danny Sturridge is in here, but you know maybe Fornaroli will outscore Sturridge this season. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Fornaroli is easily top five um, strikers in the league. Uh, definitely not number one for me. It's still J Mac. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, Ari asks standout player for the round. So I guess I can pick a specific player from my team of the week that that is the player of the round. And you know what? For me, it's going to be Reese Williams for Western Sydney Wanderers. I just thought his importance to to that result, to that clean sheet, was, was you know, it can't be understated, his importance to the Wanderers' side in that game. And I think without him, it, the result could have been different, to be honest. So for me, it has to be Reese Williams. Um, you know, apart from that, there weren't necessarily any other players that really stood out as much as as much as Reese did. So for me, I'm going to go for Reese Williams. Uh, Matt asks, surely do a three, two, one votes after each Mariners A League game. Um, well, let's do a three, two, one right now for the for the F three derby. So um, I'll tell you what, we'll go three Jacob Farrell, uh, two Marco Urena, and then for one, for one, I'm actually I'm actually going to go Ruan Tongik. I thought Ruan Tongik was I thought I thought both centre backs and Mariners had had a great game. Ruan Tongik and Rolls, um, you know, wonder why under pressure at times, especially late on in the game. And Tongik was, you know, clearing the ball, blocking crosses. Um, he, you know, obviously he missed out in the FA Cup last week. So I thought he was crucial to uh, to the Mariners' defense to, to keeping almost a clean sheet. Of course, Jets grabbing that goal at the end. Uh, but yeah, sneaky, sneaky vote, vote there for, uh, for uh, Ruan Tongik. Um, this is an interesting one in here from, from Ev- Evan on Instagram. Is the year age stats... 
So the ages of the Sydney FC players, catching up with them, that's, that's basically what he asks. So are the Sydney FC players, are they getting too old, I guess? Um, and look, this is something that I see a lot of people actually bring up. For me, there's no evidence to say yes. Um, you know, hey, I, maybe there's some concern from Sydney FC fans after watching the derby and not, not you know, finding the back of the net. Uh, I think you have to remember in the, in the Sydney derby, they were missing some key personnel. I think Luke Bratton, uh, you know, completely changes the dynamic in that midfield for them. Barbarousis is, you know, always deadly. And Bobo up top as well, who, who you know, provides so much physicality at the top. And Trent Bahaji is very different to, to Bobo. So um, Sydney FC were under strength in that game. Um, I don't think they are. I think if you look at Ninkovic, he was still, he still had a decent game. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't tearing it up in the derby, but he had a solid game as well. He was creative. And, uh, you know, I guess Lafondre's in his 30s as well, but he's still looking pretty decent. I think he'll be up there on the Golden Boot uh, charts. But... I think it's something. I think it's a question that might be easier to answer, Evan. You know, throughout throughout the season, and maybe if Sydney FC are starting to drop away, maybe you have to look at that. Are these older players, you know, keeping up to it? And I feel like Steve Corrick is the kind of guy that, like, if they aren't, then he's not afraid to bring in Trent Bahagia, Patrick Wood. You know, and he's now got Ellis Camp sober, Max Burgess. So these older players who don't get me wrong are fantastic um you know if they're not performing he, he's he's got he's got the uh, reinforcements to, to to you know to come in and replace them so yeah man it's an it's an interesting one that's for sure and i do see it uh, i do see it brought up a lot um we've got some uh, some good questions coming in here actually as well so uh from, one in from dylan uh thoughts on Cy Cy so goddard uh didn't know if the jets were really aggressive towards him specifically or not yeah so there was a he picked up a few fouls and i think i think just a simple answer for this one is he's that's the kind of player he is it was great to see him get you know a really uh you know solid sort of stint um in the in the a league this week he started on that right hand side and uh he seems like a player and i've, and I've heard from some of the guys in the mariner squad you don't know whether he's right or left footed and um we saw that a number of times uh so you know, who knows he was taking corners with his right foot i thought he was left footed but yeah the, just the way he plays very sort of tricky the way he moves around um almost like he dribbles like someone like maybe milos ninkovic or even um you know even you know he's 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 one of those creative players that are very direct and um yeah, so, so he's, he's kind of – Rennie Piscopo almost as well. Those sorts of players really uh, – they pick up a lot of fouls, you know what I mean? So I think he's going to be that guy for us, so I got it. But uh, he, looked, he looked fresh as well. He looked fresh as well. Um, Sam asks, uh, for the Mariners, changes you would make to the starting lineup? I love the Maresh super sub with 25 to go. Yeah, uh, Sam, I like that too. Like I like bringing on Maresh. We've seen it again last week in the FA Cup and, and here. Um, it's good because Maresh is someone who's who's – he looks like he's ready to harass defenders. He's fast. He's agile. He's going to get up there. And he almost had a couple of chances to score in the, in the back end of the F3 derby. Um, I, would, I don't think I would make any changes to that lineup. You know, I, I don't want to drop Benny Benny on the left or Sai on the right. And then Niz, Niz is in good form at the moment. You know, he's, he's got that first goal and, and he looks like I think his confidence is going to be high on confidence heading into the following rounds. I would, I would, I just, and with Simo coming back, I'd just put him, start him on the bench. And then that gives us the option of, you know, an attack to bring on, si is it Simon? Is it Sakanis? Is it Maresh? You know, three different strikers. And we haven't even talked about Nikolai Muller. And that's something that, that actually I got a lot of, you know, on, on game day, everyone, I got, actually got a lot of messages saying, you know, oh, where's Nikolai Muller? Where's Nikolai Muller? Um, and of course, he's, he's, he's been out injured for the last few, few weeks. Um, but where does Nikolai Muller fit into this Mariners side? That's the interesting thing. And, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Nikolai Muller was fit, if Nikom, Nikolai Muller was 100% was fit uh, this coming weekend, which he might be, um, I wouldn't start him. I wouldn't start him because there's no, there's nothing to show that the current crop of Mariners players are underperforming or anything. You know, we, we looked really, really solid and consistent, I think. Um, but yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see even where that, where he fits in as well. But for me, I wouldn't make any changes to it. I reckon it was really, really solid. Um, and then one more here in from Luke. Is it too early to say that football is coming home to Gosford? <laughs> oh, did we hope so. We hope so. And it's funny. I mean, so many people, I saw um, the, the Channel 10 uh, commentary team, like the whole uh, TV gang, they, they, it was shared on the socials, their, all their top six predictions. I don't think... I don't think a single one of them, and there was, you know, heaps. There was like, what, eight, ten, eight nine, ten people, like probably more than that. 
not a single person put Mariners in their top six, which kind of baffles me considering that Mariners, not only did Mariners finish third last year, but I think people forget that Mariners were top of the league for, the, for a half the season. Like Mariners were the best team in the country for half the season last year. And, you know, yeah, we've lost Alan Stadjic, um, you know, Gianni Stenson, Stanley De Silva, but especially when you look at the key defensive figures in, in, in Biri, Giddy, Rolls, Tongik, Bazanic, and, you know, Alan Stadjic, just because Alan's left doesn't mean, you know, we've lost that quality. He's, he, he was he, just the way he, he brought a new philosophy and a new optimism to this club. That, that was the most important thing. And Monty, Monty was involved with the club while Stadge was there. He's just going to carry that through. And so far we have seen that happen. So, uh, I could rant about, on, about that forever, but is football coming home to Gosford? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, man. But guys, thank you as always for sending in those questions. I do appreciate it. If you want to be sending in questions to be answered on the podcast, make sure you keep an eye on, uh, it's generally Mondays when when the podcast question uh, poll thing comes up on Instagram stories, or you can shoot them through on Twitter and Facebook as well on Mondays. Uh, but right now, I'm very excited to share this uh, snippet of an interview that, that I had with Mariners youngster Max Ballard. Uh, I talked to him about the upcoming season and, you know, he, of course, he started on the weekend in the F3 derby. I think he is a player who could potentially have a breakout season this year in the A-League. If you do want to check out as well the full chat with Max Ballard, uh, that is up on YouTube. So I'll make sure to have that linked again down in the description if you want to check out the full interview. But here is a snippet of the chat that I had with Mariners youngster, Max Ballard. All right, so excited right now to have um, one of the most exciting young guns to be coming up through the ranks at the Mariners joining me right now. It's Max Ballard. How's it going, man? Yeah, really good. Thanks for having me. Dude, and appreciate you taking the time out to join me for a chat. Let's first of all start off with, um, you know, it's, it's probably in the most recent uh, in most recent memory for Mariners fans, and I'm sure for yourself as well, the FFA Cup game, of course, um, on last Saturday in Mudgee. You know, what were your thoughts on the game overall? What, what did you take out of the game? Of course, you had a really solid stint in the game. Um, yeah, what were your thoughts? Um, I thought it was a great game. Uh, Blacktown were, were very good also. They defended very well. Um, we definitely had our chances to, to bury the game early, I guess, and even like make the scoreline even bigger than it was. But uh, they were they were very impressive, and their their goalkeeper had a great game also. Um, but um, I was happy with how the team was gelling. We're we're getting some good combinations going through, and it was just the final final product at the end. We just couldn't quite get get the goal, and then I was really happy for Benny, especially. Uh, I'm half French myself, actually, so uh, I've got on quite well with Benny. And I was really happy to see him get his uh, goal on debut and things like that. So I was really happy for him. Brilliant, brilliant, and funnily enough, I'm glad you brought up the French thing because I was gonna, I was gonna ask this as, as a, at, at the end, but I was, uh, I of course had to, I ran down and grabbed a quick selfie with Benny after the game because I had to, because of course scoring on debut, and I remember seeing you walking along with Benny along the touchline, and you would, I, I could see you talking French. It's like I'm, Max Ballard speaks French. What, what's this? yeah? And I was gonna ask what the story is behind that. So you're half French, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So both my parents are French, and. Right. Um, my dad used to play rugby quite a bit and um, he got an injury while playing in France and his coach told him to come to Australia to, to like for the off season and it was the season in Australia. And so he came to Australia and then uh, he never went back and he told my mom to come over and that was it. And yeah, so uh, I was, just grew up speaking French at home and stuff like that. And so having Benny come over, it was good to help him like transition into here. And his, his English is getting a lot better every day too. So I'm really happy for him. Brilliant. There you go. So you, I guess he's sort of the French translator at the, at the Central Coast Mariners now. Hey, brilliant stuff. Um, hey, let's go back to uh, the early stages of your career, you know, going back from a young age and uh, how you first got into football. It's always interesting hearing, you know, how professional footballs first got started. You know, was football something that you fell in love with from a young age? Well, um, my dad was a rugby player, so he probably pushed me for a bit of, a bit of rugby. Uh, but my mum preferred the the less violent sport of football and uh, I got into it. I was pretty young, uh, probably like five years old. Um, but I was uh, I was living in Malaysia at the time when I first started. And uh, and yeah, I was just grew up playing. And then I've lived in a number of countries in Asia growing up uh, through my dad's job, just following him. And so I ended up in like Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Dubai, and just continued playing football wherever I went. And I loved it and just kept going, kept going. And, when I came back, um, yeah, it was just kept following football, and it's been it's been great for me. I'm really happy for it. 
Nice, man. Yeah. And, and we, we are stoked to have you at the Mariners and, you know, really excited for sort of your future here at the club uh, as well. So let's talk about your time at the Central Coast Mariners so far. And of course, you made you made a couple of appearances last season. And it was interesting actually going back because, because I mean, the, the mainly bench appearances, but I didn't actually realize this, but the two sort of big appearances you made were, were both against Melbourne City, who, of yeah. course, as we know, were absolutely dominant last year. Um, so that was cert that's certainly a big test to be thrown to the deep end. Um, you know, I, I remember specifically you made uh, that second half bench appearance when we played City at home, and a lot of fans were really impressed just with that cameo appearance there. And then, of course, um, later on the season, you started um, in the middle of the park away to Melbourne City, and that was a tough game, of course, playing yeah. down there away to them. But what was your experience you know, your first season, you know, making your de debut, you know, talk us through that experience, you know, integrating, being integrated into the first, uh, in the first team squad for that last, last year. Yeah. So, um, like Monty and Sergio were in the youth team and I was in the youth team setup pretty much for a long time. And they helped me a lot. Like they've taught me so much about football and put me in a great pathway. And, um, and so I was just training with them and then eventually, um, got an opportunity to train with the first team with Stadge and um, uh, took my took my chance, I guess, a little bit and um, just kept training with them, ended up staying throughout the, the – I arrived like midway through preseason and just stayed with them throughout the season and then um, eventually made my debut against MacArthur, which I was really proud of, um, MacArthur away. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a really proud moment for, for me and my family and I was really thankful for all the help that the club – the club has given me and the opportunity that they gave me to play and then um yeah my my big like longer appearances on the field were against melbourne city which were very fun and um the well the the first one was amazing it was simo's um two, 200th appearance i'm pretty sure and uh, he had he had an amazing game and danny de silva scored a, a late bomb to, to make it three two and so uh, it was just amazing feeling being on the field at the time then and then Melbourne City away from my starting uh, starting debut. That was a very tough game. Uh, they're they're very good at home, and but I, I hope we can change, and I'm sure we can change the the result when we go there this week. I mean this season. For sure, man. For sure, and that sort of segues nicely into this upcoming season. Mm -hmm. And you know, looking at the Mariners' midfield, of course, we lost Gianni Stensness, who was such a key player for us last year. And, you know, a lot of the talk around Mariners fans talking about who are we going to sort of see line up for the Mariners. It's always exciting to sort of, uh, you know, speculate. Of course, Oli Bazanic is, is a real leader in the middle of the park. And, you know, a lot of people have, have talked about you potentially pairing up with him. And we did see you guys, of course, um, you know, teaming up in the middle of the park in the FFA Cup game on the weekend. What are your sort of expectations for this season, knowing that you could potentially be having a bigger role in the side? Obviously, it's up to Monty in the end to decide who starts each each week. But, um, you know, do you feel like you're with your the, the experience that you did get last season? Are you ready for this upcoming campaign to really become, you know, elevated into the first team squad? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to potentially have the chance to play a, a lot more minutes than I did last season. And I, I believe that. I, I believe I do have the ability, and but I know it will take a lot of hard work and having Ollie next to me and even other players in the club like Harry Steele, Nizzy, all these other boys that are pushing me in the midfield and I'm improving every day and learning from Ollie is amazing. He's such a great player with such amazing experience that um, uh, I'm just grateful to, to be there and I'm very hopeful that I'll get a good chance this season and I hope I can make all the Mariners uh, fans really proud and push uh push to as far as we can and i'm sure we we have a good shot of winning this thing this season hopefully hopefully and it's an exciting it's exciting to hear the players um talk like that too and, and and hearing you know the optimism there's a lot it seems to be a lot lot of optimism around the club heading into this new season and yeah actually i was actually going to mention you know playing alongside ollie um i shared a post on my instagram story yesterday uh you know one of the instagram pages we're talking about you know, a lot of people do talk about ollie being the best center midfielder in the league in Australia at the moment. And I think that's a fair shout, you know, just the leadership that he brings. So I th what is it like for you being a young player playing alongside, you know, this guy who has played at a world cup for Australia. Yeah. And on top of that as well, your head coach now is arguably the greatest defensive midfielder we've seen in Mariners history, Nick Montgomery. So fantastic people to be bringing you up. What's that like? You know, what, what are some things that maybe you've learned and picked up from those two guys? Um, Monty, I've always learned that uh, hard work will get you where you want to be. And um, he, he's always pushed that in me uh, since he's joined the club. 
And um, I have a funny story with Oli because um, I went away in, I think, 2019 in January with uh, Australian schoolboys to like to the UK. And uh, we ended up going to watch uh, one of the Hearts game in Scotland. And after the game, Oli Bazanich came and took a photo with us. And I, I've actually got the photo on my phone. And then there's like a young version of me. And then I, to be fair, like I knew of Oli Bazanich and then all that. And then when I heard he was joining the club, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> what, are, what are the odds of this? Like we had a oh, photo sweet. like in 2019 and now he's at the club and playing alongside him. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. I really enjoy it. Oh, that's brilliant, man. That's so good. And uh, hopefully we can see the two of you, you know, create a really solid partnership in the center of the park this season. I'd love to ask sort of what are some maybe, are there, are there, are there certain plays in the squad? You know, we've got a few new guys that, that are sort of unfamiliar to, to football fans in Australia and Benny and, and, and Sai and, and, you know, Maresh who has recently arrived as well. Yeah, are there any particular plays, you know, in particular, or even some of the young guys coming through? I know you mentioned Harry Steele before. Who are some players that you think we should be watching out for this season? Um, one that I have a really like, what I believe is amazing is uh, Jacob Farrell. He is mm. a he's a great great young player on the le uh, left back. Um, I played with him in the youth team and thought he was quality. He's not a very loud player, but he he does his job and it's, it's amazing how well he does it. Um, so I believe he's a very big one. Um, I'm sure Harry Steele is a great player and played with him in the youth team. Also, we have a lot of players from the youth team that uh, that have come up, and I'm really happy for that too. And uh, uh, yeah, Benny, classy, classy left foot, Sai, you don't even know which foot he is. Um, he, he, he does some magic on the field and um, uh, all these young players and even those that are experienced, I'm sure like Nikola didn't have the greatest season, say last season because he didn't, maybe didn't have the opportunity, but I'm sure he'll turn it up this season. He's been amazing for us and um, I'm sure he'll be a one to watch also. Yeah. And what's the, what's the um, expectations overall for where we can finish this season? You know, what is, I, I asked, I, you know, chatted to Noah Smith a few weeks ago and asked him a similar question, but interested to see, you know, it's, we're right on the doorstep of this of kickoff of the season. Now it's, it's, it's real as, as, and it's actually happening. What's the feeling amongst the lads? You know, do we have expect expectations to potentially finish towards the top of the ladder this season? Yeah, we've talked about it a lot. And um, I believe, um, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how the saying goes, but like, if you say it, it will happen pretty much. Mm. Like it, you speak it into existence. And so I'm a big believer in that. And so I believe like my my goal in, in my head is to come first. There's nothing less than first at this point. And uh, all the boys know that we've talked about it and we said, if we're not trying to go first, then what's the point of rocking up every every day? And so we, we know that we're going for first and that's where we're aiming on the ladder. Dude. So good. And again, as fans, so good to hear that. Uh, so we can't wait for this season. And just one final question as well. Just you personally, for your career moving forward, you know, you're a young player, I've got a huge career ahead of you. What are some goals that you'd love to achieve or potentially maybe some areas that you feel like you want to work on moving forward? What sort of player do you want to become in the future? Uh, my, my goal personally is to become one of the most renowned players, like center midfielders in the league. And um, I believe I, I just need a game time and be able to perform when I do have that game time. And um, that's one of the, my, my biggest goal is to make sure that I'm a renowned player within the league in terms of the midfield position. And that when, when you think of midfielders at the moment, you're thinking Oli Bazanic and maybe Bratton and players like that. And I, I would like my name to be in there. That's my personal goal. So it's a big goal, but uh, I believe with hard work, it can be achieved. Dude, and as you said, you speak it into existence. That's the thing. So uh, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that, that this is a huge breakout season for you. Um, I know a lot of Mariners fans are really excited to see to see yourself and a lot of those, a lot of the young lads coming through. You know, break into this first team and you know help hopefully carry our uh, our side to success. So, Max, uh, once again, thanks for coming on Coast Foot Football today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, guys, thanks so much for checking out yet another episode of the Coast Foot Football podcast. Of course, the podcast available on all podcast platforms. How many times did I say podcast in the last 10 seconds? Um, available on every platform. That includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the episodes drop every single Tuesday. And of course, the video podcasts available on the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, I highly recommend it. That's where uh, a whole bunch of content is coming. So many videos, uh, round previews, round, round reviews episodes. Uh, a lot going on over on YouTube.
YouTube. Uh, hey guys, have a great week. We've got an exciting week of A-League action coming up this weekend in round two. My Mariners travel down to Wollongong to face Wellington Phoenix. If you'd like to hear my thoughts, my previews and predictions for that, keep an eye out on Thursday where I'll be doing my round predictions video. Okay, uh, have a great week, guys. I'll see you in the next one.